Hello, everybody out there in the internet. Welcome to Tekken and Buff Save the Universe, episode number 45. It is uh, Saturday, March 5th, 2022. I'm Chris Hems, the Tekken Master, joined by... Buff Larkin. Oh, a Saturday. A Saturday. Oh, my God. That's that's pretty good. It's, it's exciting when you got nothing to do on a Saturday but sit back and talk about video games and wrestling and and uh, all of our hatefulness we have about ourselves. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> I thought... You're the one always saying I have hatefulness. What are you talking about? Wow. Uh, today I'm sharing it with you. How's that? Oh, okay. Is that, is that, good, is that good enough? <laughs> I made a girl's whatever. That's right. That's right. But anyway, today you, we have a we have a docket of stuff. We're going to try something different today. We're actually going to review AEW's Revolution. That's out uh, tomorrow. Uh, Tekken and I, who Tekken, who just started watching wrestling for the last couple of months. And he, and he is going to give us his thoughts, a rookie's perspective, if you will, on wrestling, even though he did like wrestling in the past, and he, and he left it, and he came back to it now, and we're going to get his perspective on who he thinks will win, and me, as the grizzled old veteran, will take a look at that too, so I'm very excited about that. But very first thing, uh, somebody finished a video game this week, and he's very happy. He put over 80 hours into this game, and he finished it. So, Tekken, how'd you like Forza Horizon? <sighs> Whatever. Um, so, yeah, Horizon Forbidden West, amazing. If you enjoyed the first game, you'll like the second one, because it basically... Um, I'm not going to say anything about the story, but it basically... the It takes place basically six months, I think, after Zero Dawn, and it just it picks up and never lets up, and it's just like, man, if you were impressed or enjoyed all that just, like, amazing like world building storytelling in the first game it's the sequel does is like best as like as good or better just like you know depending on your opinion but like man just it hit all the right notes, notes for me and it was cool like as i was playing through i was like i was like sitting back like this kind of feels like a bioware game or like this feels very bioware and just like it got there's like certain some stuff in there and it's like oh it could like and it totally it totally hit the, the like a a certain some certain stuff in certain and like Mass Effect to me to me and I was like oh man that was awesome and just like there's certain parts where um you're just like hanging out with your friends and like talking to them and it's just like man this feels like an effing Bower game as you're just like bonding with your friends in your adventure and it's like yep this is effing I can I can feel the Bower sprinkles in the delicious ice cream sundae that they made in that game so good and the wow. combat's just as good um I mean, I I just used mostly the bow, so I mean, I didn't really use too much of the other stuff this time around. I I stuck mainly to like the bow, and then a, a bit with the spear towards the end because I had like a a melee centric piece of armor that was when do that. But they completely like revamped that stuff in the second game. It's pretty cool. Like they've added more combat options for the uh, if you want to get up and close and use spears. Uh, and then like yeah, just it's 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 all the good stuff about the uh, the first one where it's like you know the machines have the weakest points. You can go for the weak points, and like you can knock off the different parts for the components for the armor, and like all the crafting stuff is back, and the uh, environments oh are beautiful and breathtaking. Uh, and then the nighttime looks it looks absolutely gorgeous when the stars are out, and you're just like looking at the the way they modeled the stars. I'm like, how did they do that? It was like effing like it just it looks so good. And then this one time, I was like, I took a screenshot of it. I was like underwater, and I was coming up from the water, and it was nighttime, but there was like a green like layer of like the water over the sky so it wasn't black like it usually is but it just like makes it look like it looks it looks just as good and i just like oh i have to screenshot this and just oh, it's, it's fantastic <laughs> i mean last time buff said to like rate the graphics or whatever i don't like to give like numbers but i would definitely say i would I, i'd raise it from like whatever i gave it last time to like a 10 in the graphics department because effing effing awesome and like this one time i noticed i was in the desert and like the npcs like had something on their face and i was like what is that and then like I was looking closer, and I was like, holy crap, those are beads of sweat. So it's like, yep. in the desert, you can see the beads of sweat on their effing face when you're talking to someone, and it's just like, oh. And, and, then, and, and then Aloy had, like, a mask yeah. on, but then, like, I took it off, and, like, I noticed that she had it, too, and I took some screenshots, it's just like, oh, it's... So, yeah, just, oh, looks so good. You want to lick the sweat right off her forehead. Yeah, Absolutely. it's gross. But the thing is, as soon as you said that it, uh, on our last podcast, news came out. I said, oh, you can see the sweat on her forehead. It's like, oh, Tekken's ahead of the curve. <laughs> Absolutely, about seeing <laughs> sweat on women. So that that's that's good. Not not scary at all. But uh, but I'm very glad to hear that you enjoyed the game. Uh, do you think uh, that because we're in what year number two 
of the PlayStation 5 cycle that they can build upon what they've done here to make an even better visually better looking game or are have they already uh reached the the uh the pinnacle of oh what dude, they, they can they, they can definitely do better i feel like because <clears throat> i feel like um like i don't even feel like they're using like a bunch of the ray tracing stuff i mean or just like if they are it's not really noticeable so it's like it's like it's only going to get better as time goes by and they get more familiar with it um but yeah, to answer your question i think they're they can yeah they can they can definitely do better because it's like it's just like I would imagine every time they go from whatever they did previously, it's going to be an improvement. So, I mean, that being said, they did pretty effing awesome this time. It's just like there's so much, it, everything looks amazing. Just like from floor, floor to ceiling, every material, every fabric, every face you look at of all the different characters, and just it's, it's all rendered so well. It's just, it's so effing amazing. Just like the different like weather patterns, and then the sky and like the clouds. Like, okay. Like, there's a certain thing with, like, the terraforming system in the game. Or not terraforming, but, like, the weather in the game. Where it's, like, before you do this one thing, it, it gets, like, a bit weird sometimes. And you can, like, see supercells forming. And then it gets, like, a weird, like, red lightning stuff going on. It's just, like, it's really cool. And it's, like, you can just, like, you just, like, sit there in awe sometimes. Which is, like, that looks effing awesome. It's just, like, ah. Just a lot of the small stuff like that. of just, like, the wet, like, the effing clouds in the sky, dude. It's just, like, I did not think I would... Or just, like, the volumetric, um like fog or like uh, stuff in the distance when you're just looking over the vistas and like you've got like low clouds on the mountains that you're looking at and it's just like oh my god that's like the magazine it's just oh. every every time you like pan the camera and you're up really high and like the vistas everywhere you look are just so gorgeous and mind-blowing and it's great because it's like if you're in the daytime and you're looking off you see all the, the machines or like the tall necks or whatever and it's like you can see them but then at nighttime you can still see them because they've got lights on them and it's like you can see the little lights on their little effing faces and it's just like or wherever their light sources are and it's just that's also another amazing thing was the lighting in the game because it's just the, the machines will search for you and it's just like their little lights will come on and be like doo -doo 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 -doo, or like you'll be able to see something in the distance because you'll like see a light and be like okay i know something's there and just like you know it'll tip you off like oh what's that or like just the audio as well because you can like hear stuff and be like oh what's that noise or just i hear a machine and just like you hear like the you know, depending on, like, if it's, like, a Jurassic Park T-Rex style, if it's just, like, the stomp, mm -hmm. which is, like, poosh, poosh, poosh. So, you know, it's something large in the distance. Like, ooh, that's, that sounds dangerous. I should probably uh, <laughs> slow down my rate of movement here and just, like, be careful to see what that is over the over the uh, horizon here. No pun intended, but uh, it's an absolutely fantastic game, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I can't wait to finish the rest of the side content because I haven't done all the side content. But I really wanted to like do a new game plus immediately. But just like the first game, I'm kind of sad to say there's no new game plus. So I was like, dude, come on! But because it took me like until the sequel to replay Zero Dawn. So I was like, hopefully, this doesn't happen with this this time around. I mean, imagine I imagine it won't since I'm off of Destiny. So I'll actually have time to replay it now. But uh, good stuff. And there's and there's a mini game called Machine Strike, which is like these. 1v1 uh, strategy RPG battles, which I really, I really want to get into, but right now I'm like just not good at it. So, I there's there's a ton of like side stuff for me still to do. So, awesome, awesome game. I highly, highly recommend it if you've uh, any interest in it at all, or you like the first one. Oh crap! My Skype crashed. <laughs> that is my bad. I I need to fix that. That's my bad. Let me get Buff back in here. And, uh, yeah, that happens every time. One second, I'm going to text him and be like, Skype crest, sorry. <laughs> Again, I, 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 sh I was going to say that at the top of the show, it'd be like, if my Skype crashes, I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, anyway. Well, that's awesome. You called you call me. Yeah, my Skype crashed again. And my phone actually uh, caught up with me. I was like, oh, wow. My phone was caught, Tommy. Uh, but yeah, but if I, don't, I don't know how much of that you'd miss, but I was basically just like gushing about the game. You're talking about, you're talking about the T-Rex. Ad nauseum. Right? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, I got all that. It was just in the T-Rex. You mentioned the T-Rex. I, 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 I don't remember what I was talking about. about uh, yeah, you're talking about like, all the T-Rex. The T-Rex, but uh, it's, I was just saying it's like an awesome, amazing game. So if you enjoyed the first one, check it out. Or have any interest in it? Because it's definitely it's definitely worth playing for sure. Yes, I mean if you're into open world games. And then and then, and then there was a pause, and that's when I asked, 
Or are you looking to do? Would you believe there would be a trilogy? There, there's going to be a trilogy in this, well, right? I mean, I don't know. Are, you, are you recording this? Yeah. Okay. Good. Like I don't. I mean, third game is is like definitely hinted at in this one, but it's like, you know, I don't know how many they're going to make after that. I'm not going to like. I'm not sure if they're going to like just make three and call it, but um, you know. I guess we'll see, but it's like I, I, it's like a major franchise right now. So it's like I don't know if they're just, yeah. they're just gonna end up the third game, or like, it's like we'll see what happens after the third game. But it's like for sure the third game isn't like gonna happen. So I'm, I'm curious to see if they do an expansion like they did for the uh, first game they did for the for the Frozen Wilds. So I'm curious if there's gonna be a expansion, but uh, you know I look forward to that if it ever comes out. If not, no big deal. Cause, cause I have, cause I also have a theory about the whole like uh, games of service thing that I was like effing anxious about because i was like okay well they've got like 10 i think okay here's my theory about the whole games of service thing is like at, uh, initially i was nervous but now i'm thinking okay it makes more sense if you think about like sony's output since ps3 era and it's been mm -hmm. like you know they've had studios that have a franchise that are tied to them internally for the teams and they put out the games so we've got god of war uncharted uh last of us horizon you know ratchet and clank infamous uh ghost of tsushima etc cetera, etc cetera. that's like seven off the top of my head so basically, I think the plan is to basically, instead of having a, you know, the traditional style of games where you have like a single player and a multiplayer is like, and like you have like a watered down multiplayer. It's like, instead of just having just like a, a single player, that's like awesome. And then like multiplayer, that's kind of eh, you basically take the, the ideas you have for whatever multiplayer would be and you completely blow it out and make it, its, make it its own thing. And like, that's what they're probably the plan is for games of services, like each game or each multiplayer uh, vertical, let's say, of like each of the franchises is going to be its own thing. And that way it's like you can also not have to worry about like resources in development when single player stuff's being made going to multiplayer crap. And then also you have the, uh, since it's a game of service, they can just build it to be profitable and get it and like have it be the, you know, like I said, the <laughs> when we initially heard about, the, you know, the 10 revenue strings. So I need to like come up with like a joke for that. But, uh, right now it's my theory because currently that i think that is well i don't know if that's like for sure but like they did have like the factions mode of uh last of us part two separate so we know they're working on that but i'm not sure if that was like a plan then but i imagine you know that's in my brain when i think about it that's what uh i think they're probably working on here that's what the goal is well that's good so uh now that with that game in the garbage uh what what <laughs> What game have you uh, now turned your attention to? Uh, after Horizon is Gran Turismo time, so I've been playing a lot of that. So, uh, you have played... Uh, it, would you say that Gran Turismo is one of your favorite games? Ooh. I mean, it's one of my favorite series. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite... I mean, I guess the way to phrase it is kind of weird, but it's like, I guess it's one of my favorite, sure. Because cause honestly, Need for Speed has kind of gone down in quality, and like for me, Burnout was like the, the best of like what we had as far as like racing games and like hasn't it's never really rematerialized well, as it was no. when it was at its apex or at, exp at, at, at in its prime but Grand Turismo Grand has been like consistent with like or for the most part Grand has been consistent so I've been, I look forward to each each entry and why, it does its own thing why do you think they stopped after uh, Burnout Paradise uh I mean the only thing I would say for EA because that's who they are is like they didn't sell enough and it's like oh our shareholders didn't think we uh did, it didn't move, move the bean counter enough and we didn't have enough beans when we went to measure the bean counter but um it's like either it didn't sell enough or they just are trying to rework it into something else and like have it be different compared to like what it is because it did kind of like go in a weird way when it did paradise in my opinion like compared to like what it was previously but i mean they've got need for speed so it's like I, it, might, it might also be that where it's like you know they want to just focus on making need for speed the best it can be and like not have multiple racing franchises which is weird but i, don't, I, I honestly don't know but yeah those are my theories on that so saying that how are you enjoying this compared so have you played every gran turismo from one all the way now to seven all of them except for like the Japanese only prologue stuff or just like the prologue entries which are not full versions so yes and uh, I mean and I didn't so play like Grand Turismo 2 but I did play it because like back in the day when I had a backwards compatible PlayStation I went, went and played the old ones because I was curious 
but like it, I didn't play the like the first. I mean, I played might have played like the first one at a friend's house, like when it was like out. But like the second one, I didn't play in continuity. Everything else I've been played played in continuity because three was one of my favorites. And ever since then, I've been like, oh yeah, on team Grand Chismo for sure. And so, have you seen this as a forward progression? Have you enjoyed what you've been seeing? I think it's more of a return to form. Uh, but I would say it's also re- progression because I was surprised what they did. Um, I wasn't sure if it would work with the whole cafe system, but it's actually quite good in my opinion, as far as like making a, like a guided single player experience in a racing game. It's like its own, it's like they're, that's like basically it's the uh, Polyphony Digital's own flavor of, uh, how they would do that. And it works to perfect. Well, I'm not gonna say it works to perfection, but it's like, it works quite good. It's kind of got like weird quirks to it because there's no voice acting and you interact with a bunch of different NPCs that you kind of just like <laughs> that don't have any real significance because it's just like randoms it feels like but uh the way it's the way it's done is pretty cool you talk to them and they talk about cars and they talk about like the historic significance of like all the different cars and car manufacturers and carfax and it's right, pretty here, cool okay so here's my question who gives a shit <laughs> i mean if you're really in the cars which is the which is one of the uh things with the franchise was just like being super sim and into the whole car car simulation and tuning and aspect of the cars so you are um so because they're buying this game you think the people who buy this game would be more interested in the history of cars as opposed to somebody who'd be playing like a burnout and all of a sudden they'd say here here's a history on these cars and and they would say no i just want to smash people i mean Yes, just because it, I mean, the last few entries in the series, I mean, yeah, yeah, because, like, they're, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's kind of like, like, Grand Chism, one of Grand Chism motifs, though, is, like, it is, like, a, it's, like, there's a lot of information there. If you'd, like, if you'd like to know more, you can always just, like, you know, dig into, the, like, the, there's a lot of text to read, but there's always, like, a lot of information in the games, as far as, like, getting to know stuff about, you know, oh, this front wheel drive car has the, the the wheels are mounted a specific way or the engine is, is mounted a specific way and the power is drawn from the the side of the car to push it in this direction or just like it, it goes so deep into like each different type of car and like how they're you know different from each other and like what's it what makes it tick and like how does it work it's very it's always been like that so i, I was i was i've always found that fascinating about the series like to me it's like Grand Turismo, like you would like it, it pull it doesn't pull just pull in people that want to play like a racing game. It, it also pulls in people that just like cars in general because there's like a lot of you know just car stuff in the game, and this, like in like this one's like, even, or the last few have been like even more like that. Especially, I mean, sport not so much because it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a different uh it, like a departure really for the series. It was, it was like more multiplayer focused, but um now that it's like back, it's got like all those weird things from like the previous ones that are like making it very um quirky or the or the different weird quirks from like having that because there's like a bunch of different museums in the game that have like a bunch of different facts about like just random stuff <laughs> but then it's you can always like tie it back to cars and stuff so yeah i mean that oh. being said it's like it's like it's like you know, but yeah i mean i agree I, with well, what i just said on top of like also you know if you want to just play to race cars and drive different cars in a game like a racing game you can do that but it's also like it works on like a, another level compared to other racing and driving games because it's got all that interesting museum you know research information like knowledge about car stuff and car cultures or, or just the manufacturers or just cars anything that has to relate to cars and automobiles and sometimes other things that are not entirely related in general but like it's just yeah it's very interesting in that aspect of being a like encyclopedia <laughs> encyclopedia about cars car, mm-hmm. cars and uh racing and motorsport and all that good stuff. Very good. Well, that that's good to hear. Now, um, is there a car that is in the game that you are looking to unlock, or is it is or is it you're just playing whatever comes up? You go, oh look a Porsche, oh look a Ferrari, oh look I got a, a you know a Fiat, you know stuff like that. I it's mean, like, it's weird because there is, but it's like in the context of the game, it's like I don't really need to get the car to do this stuff or I don't need to get the car I want to do things in the game with cars because there's so many different kinds of cars and types of cars it's like 
and it kind of I don't know I mean there is yeah because it's like I want to get the 458, 458 Italia from Ferrari why but then I like why? but then it, it's just a beautiful car and it's, it's it's fast and I enjoy driving it and I'll never own one because it's so expensive and then um it's like there's that one the effing uh Subaru Impreza I think it's like 1998 97 I can't remember the year but like that one the like the uh, super awesome one from the 90s and like those two are like the you know because it's like the sweet import that's awesome I like to drive around. I mean, well, there's like the main two. There's other ones, but then I kind of, it's going to get like a bit weird if I keep going. But like, I'll just I'll just leave those two. It's like you know the super awesome supercar, and like the sweet import that I want to drive around. Um, because because like the other stuff that's like entry level as far as like in those different types of car classes, I don't have to like try too hard to get them or obtain them. It's like they're they're rather cheap, or like I had them like within an hour of playing the game or something. Just so like it wasn't that bad. Oh, very good. Okay. Um, just off the... Now we're going to change a little topic here because you know how much I love changing topics really young without letting you know. Um, <laughs> good old buff curveball. The, the, the buff bounce. We're going to bounce to another... The buff bounce down the target. The Batman movie is coming out. Uh, as we speak, it's out this weekend. Uh, what's your thoughts? On what? Everything about Batman. Or would you go... Would you First of all, if... Okay, Without being COVID, would you go see this movie in the theater? Oh yeah, dude. If, if there wasn't COVID, I would. I mean, I've already seen it. You've if already it was seen available it. Available digitally. Oh. I would okay. have There's bought that. it. Thanks for thanks for that. Uh, DC Warner Brothers way to way to drop the ball. So so what excites you about this movie as opposed to? Um, well, I can only go from the trailer, and it just like I wish I, I watched maybe like once or twice, and it just like I I, I enjoyed the aspect of like his rage of just like. You know, it just like the part when he's like punching that dude, he just keeps punching him. And he's just like, oh, oh, and he just keeps punching him. And just, just like, oh, it's like I don't know if we've seen that um, aspect in like the live action ones as far as like his no. just like rage about just like stuff. Does does this feel like he's a rookie Batman? Yeah, and therefore that's so the, the Batman we've because like if he wasn't a rookie, people. he would like be able to keep all those emotions in check and not yeah. be like some completely unhinged. Like that doesn't seem like something Batman. Would. <laughs> like, that, that, that's I think that's like why I was so intrigued by. It. I was like. Ooh, Bruce, uh, <laughs> what, what happens? I, 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 yeah. Oh, dude, settle down. Uh, it's just your parents. My parents are dead. <laughs> Where are the drugs? Where are the drugs? Um, does this... When you talk about the atmosphere, does this give you a kind of a Arkham, Arkham City, Arkham Asylum kind of a feel? Mm, no, no, not, no, not atmospherically it looked like its own thing like its own take on the mythos okay like okay. i thought when you're saying you like it it's because you're a big fan of the arkham series well, i'm just, a, I'm just a fan arkham of the character Knight. in general so it's like it's yeah. like it's always nice to see another uh, interpretation or adaptation of the work can you tell me which of the batmans in the movies you hated the most hated the most mm. it, well i haven't seen the ben affleck one so i guess it'd be that one because i haven't seen it so it's well, like a zero score for me because I haven't seen it. Okay, so let's go with the second one then. Since you haven't seen this, this is the, this is the one you've actually seen. Mm. And you, you hate it. I think, I, I, okay, well, well, like the Nolan Trilogy is my favorite. Nolan, Nolan Trilogy is my favorite. And like, so it's like, it's not that one. Yeah. And then I like the Michael Keaton one because I remember like when I saw it as a kid and I enjoyed it. And yeah, I like I would watch that, it, rewatch it. Right. And Jack Nicholson as a Joker is great. So I love that one. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably go with the, uh, the ones after that, where they had, like, Val Kilmer and, um, George Clooney, like, mm -hmm. those ones, the ones, the ones in between Keaton and Nolan, because it's, like, they kept changing Batman, and it's, like, dude, just keep the same person, and it's just, like, whatever, but, like, I mean, I, uh, I guess, I, would... I guess, I guess thinking about it, the one that has Joker and Riddler is pretty funny, because it's got... You know Drew Carey or not Drew Carey, Jim Carey. He's pretty, he's funny. So it's like you know the the other one, the one with the uh, Bane and Poison Ivy, that one. So George Clooney, George Clooney, yes, George, George Clooney, Batman. Yeah, when the only selling point for the movie is, <laughs> hey, come see the bad nipples. <laughs> and he would go on, he would go on TV and say, hey, look at the bad nipples. Also, if you so, like compare those ones to like the ones that we have now, they're just like so grounded and like modern and just like really well done. They're so campy, and it's just like ugh. 
Yeah, but the thing is, that was the that style. Was the, I mean, the, the, yeah, like, I get it. That was like the style of the nineties, but like, mm, kind of a campy. I wouldn't really like to be like after playing like the Arkham games and like seeing how they were done there. It's like, ooh, yeah, because Bane is so awesome in Arkham Origins, dude. Like, like he just like or no, that wasn't him. But like that, or like he's in it, but like and stuff. Like yeah, and, like it's it's good stuff with him and and Bruce. It's good stuff. Or him in or just like the whole Arkham games in general, like Poison Ivy in there and and like Bane in there. Like they're, they're much better portrayed than uh in that movie. Same with Mr. Freeze. Yeah. <laughs> Better than Arnold? Yes. yes. I, used to, I used to meet you. I used to meet you. Well, that's good. So, you are very excited for this to come on digital, and then <laughs> you're going to slurp it up with a straw. That's what you're going to do. I mean, it's awesome, too, because I didn't even know it was like three hours long until like, all, like I, saw, I saw stuff about the reviews coming out, and then people were like, it's three hours long. It's like, oh. Oh, that made me, that made me like even more excited. I was like, "Ooh, I've been a three-hour Batman movie." I was like, "Ooh, that, that oof, oof." Because mm, mm. I'm sorry, no, man. I, I'm sorry, man. It's like I was hyped for Endgame, but at the end of the day, dude, I will say that it's like, like I'm not gonna say that killed the MCU for me, but it's like definitely overhyped and overrated. I'm not gonna say it's a piece of trash, but it's like you know, it's not as good as like the hype leading up to it. And uh, in hindsight, pardon? Infinity War thousand times better. Endgame. Yes, okay, I'll give you that. Well, yeah, because so you knew, so it's you like, knew see, like a, I mean, that being said, if like if we could normalize through our uh, superhero movies, I would not, you know, I would, I would, I'd be on that train, or I'm, I'm on that, or I'm on that train for sure. Because yeah. man, I mean, I've, 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 okay, I haven't said this on the podcast, but like I have many times lamented to Buff about, oh man, they adapted X Y Z, it was trash because they left so much on the credit room floor, so. Too bad it couldn't be three hours. I mean, that being said, the ideal scenario is just like to have a series like uh, Daredevil or Punisher or it's Defenders, all that stuff, like where it's hour long episodes, Hawkeye. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like that's like the like where they need to adapt those on the, for like the visual medium. But that's, if, if, if we if we're stuck eating movies, at least you know, three hour long ones are going to be you know the yeah. <laughs> where the, where it should start at. That's right. Well, that's good. Well, that that takes care of video games. And that takes care of movies. I'll my, next time we're on here, I'll give you a full review. I've not heard one blipping thing about this Batman movie. No reviews. I've stayed away from everything. Yeah, I've, I've basically I, I, stayed away. Too. I want to. I want to go into this with a because I already got the problem with the Pattison. So it's like okay, so I gotta go into this thinking: Can this guy who used to be a glowing vampire <laughs> can this guy change my opinion on him? So and of course it's not his fault, but it's still his fault. So <laughs> it's. <laughs> but we we want to give we want to give. I it a honestly shot. feel so, like people are like overreacting to castings. It's like it doesn't really matter because I remember it, what happened with Joker, and it's like that, that was an I think awesome movie. So it's yeah. like it's really it, all about the creative team and the vision, and it's like who cares like who's cast as like whatever. It's like their job as an actor is to like you know make that role come to life. So it's like if they yeah. do a good job, and if he can convince people that he's Batman, kudos to him. After all these uh, muscle bound guys that have been Batman, now here's Mr. Lean Mean and and uh, yeah, we'll oh, see. Oh man, happens. if we had like, I mean, like, I mean, I guess that's kind of like the yeah you know, bummer part about the Gotham TV series, right? Is like it was before Bruce became Batman, so it wasn't like an actual Batman series. But like, if we had like an hour long Batman series, that'd be oh. But they probably would like f up the budget for it, so we probably would. They did have it. an hour long Batman show. It was called Gotham. I just said that. But oh, it was yeah. before he became Bruce, Bruce was Batman, so it's not technically a Batman technically, series. technically. That's right. All right. Well, let's get on to talking about. Oh, uh, so you don't want to talk about uh, Guardians or at all? No. Okay. Yeah, I was told. I was told uh, last night not to talk about it. <laughs> okay, I'll talk about it. So I, I, I going back quickly into video games. I am uh, in the process of finishing up. Uh, because of uh, Tekken's glowing review of Horizon, uh, I I went and I bought the game, uh, the first game. So I haven't played it as of yet. The kid's still in the cave. That's how far I've gone. But I said to myself, no, finish the game you've been playing, and that's Guardians of the Galaxy. And I would just like to say this is probably one of the nicest surprises that I have uh, played in a very long time. Um, I bought it on a discount. If I was new, is this good? If, if there's a sequel, and I hope there is, I would buy it first day. I would buy a sequel. If it's this much quality, it is a... I, I don't want to use the word love letter to 
comic fans, but it has something for everybody. It has something for the movie people. It has something for the comic book people. It has little, uh, little surprises. It has big surprises. It has really big surprises. Mm. And and mm. it is it is well worth playing. Now, for you, Tekken, see, I have to always remember, you are a, a gaming guru. I'm just an, uh, a casual guy. So, therefore, I'm getting a lot of charge off of how I play this game. For you... I think you would be bored because, oh, well, well let's, let's put you, well, I'm giving you the credit. I'm just giving you credit that you deserve to play. But after playing like Horizon, right, you come to this game, you're not going to get that same effect, effect, right? Yes, you're playing, you're, you're Star-Lord. Well, they're, different, yes, they're different genres, though. Yes, but as long as you, but the thing is, after playing that, you come down to this, it's, it's, it's going to be a bit of a shift. But you're Star-Lord, you have your team, you have special abilities. The way you play, if you can, if you can work as a team, the more points you get, the more points you get, the more abilities you can unlock. But there's only four special abilities for each character, right? And uh, but it, but it's always fun because you can always every battle can be done differently. It's not the same. It doesn't have to be the same old thing, right? But once you get into routine, okay, I work. Rocket doing this, I work Groot doing this, I got Gamora doing this, and Drax doing this, right? And then, but then every once in a while you change it up just to see how things different, and and all of a sudden you see how the battle changes if you do something different. You say, okay, let's incorporate this now. And each and each uh, bad guy is different, and they have to be attacked in a different way. And it's like, oh, that's nice. And then the the challenges get more and more as you get into the game, and it's like very nice. And I don't want to spoil too much because. Uh, I usually do. I try not to, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this game more than I thought I would. I was very apprehensive when it first came out, and I was an idiot for thinking that it's a very good game. I would absolutely recommend it to you Tekken uh, when it's on. As if we get under Tekken's twenty, that's what we call it. Tekken twenty, <laughs> then, then, then I would say pick it up. I mean, actually, to keep going on Guardians, it's coming to Game Pass, so I will get a chance to play it without having to buy it, so that'll That's be nice. even better. I mean, the problem is it's on Series S, which uh, there's, like, two different modes for it, and I think Series S has, like, the like 30 frames and no ray tracing or something, so it's not as graphically as good as it would be if I played it on PS5, but it's, it's, eh, it's I mean, it's not like it's, like, super gimped, so, you know. Yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful game. I absolutely have enjoyed it. All right. Now that that's out of the way, and my uh, advertisement for Guardians of the Galaxy is done, let's talk about AEW Revolution 2022 is going to happen this Sunday, March the 6th, and uh, it's actually a very strong card. When you have a pay-per-view, four pay-per-views a year, you tend to have a very good pay-per-view card. It's not just one match that you're interested in. It, it's a handful of matches, right? And that's what you'd want to have in it. If you're spending 50 bucks, which is what I have to do, for a pay-per-view, you want to have it more than just one match. You want to have it be a handful of matches that you're not quite sure who will win. And that, and that gives you more excitement, right? Um, so I'm gonna, So as the veteran here, we're going to talk about each match. We're going to break everything down. And then, uh, and then Tex can give his opinion, and I'm going to give my opinion. So... We'll start with the uh, the pre-show matches, if you're interested. Uh, let's start off with Chris Statlander versus Layla Hirsch. What do you think about that, Tekken? Uh, as far as what? Who's gonna win? Oh, I think Chris Statlander's gonna win. I think so too. I think I think this is a chance for uh, the way it works in Japan when they have because they're very rare single matches. It's usually tag matches. So when somebody's having a singles match, whoever wins that, usually they've done it for a purpose, and usually it means they're going to come out later on in the night and challenge whoever has the, has the belt and challenge them, because then they just, early in the night, beat somebody and said, okay, I can challenge you for the belt. So I think I'm going to go with what you're saying with Chris Statlander. I think she's going to win, and I think uh, that she is going to either later on that night or more probably on Dynamite come out and challenge whoever wins between uh, the two women fighting for the women's championship who we'll talk about Isn't a little it bit. Thunder Rosa and DMD? Yes. Okay. Yes, I always like, I'm just, uh, I'm foreshadowing. Okay. 
and you and you're just showing a showing a great big light on it. That's okay. Next up in the pre-show <laughs> is is rookie sensation Hook versus his trainer, the man who trained him, uh, QT Marshall. What do you think? Should Does the QT Marshall have... actually wrestle? Because every time I watch, he's just doing promos. He he actually wrestles. Okay. I, he runs. I, th- he, I think I think Hook's gonna win, dude. He's red hot. Like it, no, it's, I, it's, it's, it's I, just too much fun. It's like the, he's got the momentum. The crowd, everybody's behind him. Yeah, it's just been a fun time. It's been a fun. It's been a fun effing ride watching the like, train every week. You wish you had his hair. No, I do. <laughs> I wish I. Had, I wish I had any hair. To be honest with you, that'd be all good. But no, I, I think this is a great chance to get Hook some experience on pay per view, even if it's on the pre show. And uh, who better to wrestle than the guy who trained him? So there, he's going to make Hook like a million, look like a million bucks. And I think we're going to have ourselves a, a, a good match. And we'll see how hot the crowd is on the pre-show. Okay, like, before we go any further, I just want to say this is, like, one of the things that AEW does better than WWE as far as, like, building up talent. Because it's, like, you know, you got the Chris Stantlander match, Leila Hirsch, they've been feeding for a while. It's been good stuff to, like, watch them go back and forth. And it's, like, I'm happy, you know, regardless of who wins because they're both, you know, good performers. And then same thing with, like, the Hook thing. It's just, like, man... It's just, <laughs> it's been a fun I, I, time to watch Hook and then just have him go yeah. and just have stomp matches or squash matches, and it's a fun time. I don't want to see Hook lose, and that's just, and that's the thing. But eventually he's going to have to, but whoever beats him, it's going to be a, a big deal, right? But it, it it's nice. Let, let's ride out the Hook train, let him just wrestle the schlubs, and, and then just build up that record. 100%. Next up. Is uh, and, and of course we don't know how the match is going to be placed on the card, but we're going to just do our best. And this is a tornado tag team match, uh, with a six man with Sting, Darby Allen, and Sammy Guevara versus Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Isaiah Cassidy. So, um, this gives a sixty year old plus Sting a chance to come out on pay per view. Uh, he has been fantastic in every pay per view he's been on. Uh, since AEW, I've enjoyed them. Uh, of course, team with Darby and Sammy Guevara, which is a wacky tag team to say the least. But um, I am interested in this. I don't think it's going to be a long one. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's going to be the first match on the pay per view either. Uh, I think that usually they throw a tag team out there and uh, have them go. But I think this is. I. I do. I put the stamp down on the 100% Joe Lock. I think the the Buff Lock. I think Sting and Darby and Sammy are going to beat Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Isaiah Cassidy. Mm. What do you think? I mean, I don't know. I could see it going the other way just because after... Um, is it Dynamite that's on Fridays? Yeah, uh, Rampage. Rampage. After Rampage yesterday, uh, there's a three-way match between mm-hmm. uh, Darby, Sammy, and Andrade. But then like yeah. after after Sammy won, there's kind of some, you know... Animosity. Bad, yeah, animosity towards... Uh, from Darby to Sammy, because he's like, oh, he wouldn't shake his hand after the match, and it's like, ooh, well, maybe they're going to implode during this match, and it's going to oh. be a whole angle, it's like, ooh, what could happen, so. Oh, watch it's out, like, watch out. That, so it's like, I, I, so I will say, no, it is not 100% buff lock, or whatever the F he just said, and I will go so who, the, so who do you think, so you, do you think Matt Hardy's team's going to win? Uh, is Jeff Hardy's um, no, no compete up? Um, it's getting close. Oh, I know, I think, I think they're wrestling on the indies, uh, Matt and Jeff, but I don't think anything has happened as of yet. Okay. That'd be a nice little say, surprise. If it, if, it, if it was up, I would I would say like it, there might be like some sort of like you know debut where he runs in and like helps Matt. That'd be awesome. And like take it, take or, like, it as while eight. Darby and uh, Sammy are like feuding or something, or like not feuding, but like you know they're having a d- disagreement in the ring or something, and it just like take, blows up. Yeah. All of a sudden, Isaiah Cassidy is found passed out in the back, and all of a sudden, Jeff Hardy replaces him. That just cranks it up a whole new level, that's for sure. Book it, Tekken. Book it. <laughs> Book that. Call Jack, but that was a great Jack match between uh, Darby, Sammy, and Andrade. It was awesome. They did like a triple, it was like oh, suplex powerbomb thing. It was pretty awesome. That's That was insane. I saw I saw the clip of that. Yeah, it was that like, was dude, cool. how can Andrade like live that much weight? I mean, I guess Sammy and Darby Thank are like thinny and like, yeah. maybe don't weigh much, but that, was, that looked awesome. Like, yeah. it looked awesome. Thank God they only weigh like 20 pounds each. Yeah, they're like stick dudes. So I was like, okay, maybe that's why. But like, I was like, man, that's a lot of human weight <laughs> to be like throwing around like that. They're like stick dudes. Absolutely. <laughs> they are. Well, I mean, I mean, the Darby is not so much Sammy, but you know. Yeah. 
Uh, for the TBS Championship match, it's Jade Cargill, the rookie, talk about rookie sensations, Jade Cargill, versus Ty Conte. Wow, Tekken, this is your dream match. This is Tekken, this <laughs> lays back, dream match. lays back and enjoys the show. That's what you, because <laughs> these up. are two ladies that strike the, that stoke the fire in Tekken Master's heart, that's for sure. You wouldn't like Jade Cargill I, throwing I, I all do, over the place? I do like me some uh, Ty Conti, but I will say yeah, Jade Cargill is most likely going to win this match, unfortunately. Well, not I, unfortunately, I, but like, unfortunately for her. Yes. I enjoy the Jade show, the Jade show, the TDS show. Yeah, do, do, do you like Jade? Yeah. Jade, Jade's kind of fancy. Yeah, I think you'd like her. Ty Conti, yeah. Yeah. Now, put them in with uh, with your favorite, then everything's good. Uh, it did, okay, so let's break this up for a second. I just saw a picture on Twitter. It uh, Naomi is she teaming up with the boss? Yeah. Oh my, oh my, life is good for Tekken, that's for sure. Now let's get to talking about the uh, face of the revolution ladder match. Oh, so here we go. We got Keith Lee. This is going to be a main event for me because it's like this is. I'm looking forward to this. Wardlow, Powerhouse Hobbs. Ricky Starks, Orange Cassidy, and Christian Cage, as of last night on Rampage, winning that final spot, uh, will be the participants in the ladder match. The winner becomes the number one contender for Sammy's TNT Championship. So, my question to you is, good sir, you have yourself six contenders here. Who do you think you'd want to see challenge our good friend Sammy Guevara for the TNT title? Man. I honestly have no idea who's going to win this, so it's it's like whatever. I mean, I mean, this is another one of the match where it's like I don't I don't know who's going to win, but I don't care because it's going to be like so, a good so result regardless. But so let's start with who's not going to win. <laughs> but process, we call it process of elimination. I mean, so who, do you, who do you think doesn't have as much as I would all... like to see uh, Keith Lee win? It's like he's only had a couple of matches, so I don't think he's going to like go straight to like from debuting to getting title match. Okay. I mean, that being said, that probably has happened before in AW, but. Eh. I mean, I I don't want it to be Wardlow just because I don't want MJF's right hand dude to win because FMJF. Well, Wardlow just got the taste slapped out of his mouth on. I mean, Dynamite. they've they've been building the whole implosion thing for a while, but until it actually happens, I'm not like F. I'm not F Wardlow, but like you know, that's like I would I would still not want to see him win. So so powerhouse Hobbs. This, this well, the chance. thing is, is like you have you have powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks, and they're going to team up, obviously. Yeah. So, I think that that puts the odds in their favor. Yeah. Versus everybody else. And then we have Orange Cassidy, who is one year ago challenging for the world title. Now he's down here on a on a in a ladder match. And it's like, okay, so they've cycled him down the, the card and now he's doing this. But I, I don't see him as as a contender. He might get a shot, but you you can't really grab the grab the, t- the grab whatever's above the ring with your hands in your pockets. <laughs> Oh man, I think okay. So I think like you know, even though Powerhouse if he Hobbs go, and, if he if he goes up the ladder, and 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 he goes to reach for it, and then he just puts his hands in his pockets, I'm turning off the pay per view. I'm going, <laughs> and I, it's going to be at my apartment. So that's even that's even worse. I'll just go into my room and just say, "Here, watch the rest, boys. I'm not watching it. I'm done." Um, but like I think also with the whole Powerhouse, Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks, it could like backfire to where everybody's against them. So it's like it could work either way towards like, you know, yeah. they either elevate themselves or it screws them over to where they're just getting the crap kicked out of them by everybody else. I, I think I think you're right. I think they'll prove to be a threat until finally one goes up the ladder and says say Hobbs or and the, or Ricky Starks goes up the up the ladder. Who I like by the way, Ricky Starks is fantastic. And Hobbs comes up there and goes, wait a second. No, 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 no. I'm not here to win this for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm too. And then that'll, that'll break. So that'll be the first 10 minutes will be them teaming with to take everybody out. And then all of a sudden there'll be a, a, a miscommunication, if you will. And then, and then, then, it's, then everybody's going to be going nuts on each other. So there you go. I do, put, I do think Wardlow would be a nice win to, to for the, if there's a storyline between him and him if they're going to pull the trigger on him and mjf this is oh you're right because he bullet. did say that like uh didn't he say something about like if you win i'll let you keep the title or something exactly the title shot so right? that makes sense 
I can see that happening if that's going to be the trigger, but it could also be very good uh, booking to put that in there just to give a little spice to the to the sauce, right? And and still have because Keith Lee just came over, right? So it'd be nice to see Keith Lee win, just because then him versus Sammy Guevara would be just such a wow difference, right? And I, I it'd be nice to see. Keith Lee treated well and not as a second hand thought. That's what I would say. So I my money is on Keith Lee, you're saying Wardlow. No, well, yeah. I mean I, I it's, Christian man. Cage isn't even isn't even a thought. I mean I'm just I'm just annoyed because I don't like the whole Powerbomb Symphony thing, but I don't know. It's like I feel like I could I could see it happening is what I'm saying with Wardlow. It's like Wardlow is like the one I could see like the most happening, even though I don't want it to happen. Um I mean, I guess it, it, it's. It, I have no idea. It, man, and that's the good news. That's the good thing about this is that we don't know who can win. Heck, even Christian Cage, the king of the ladder matches, really, because he's won so many. There's a chance he could win because it doesn't necessarily whoever wins this wins the TNT title. There's no. It's just a shot. It's just it's somebody to fight Sammy. Oh, yeah, so point. therefore, it's just so therefore, so therefore, it could be anybody winning this match. I do. I do it's also just, like a. Orange Cassidy and the Best Friends. That's like my favorite faction. So I kind of, it's like, I don't think he's going to win, but it's like, I would, I would, I would like to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen. So there's a lot of variables in here. My heart goes with Keith Lee because he just came over and they want to give him a bit of a push to make him a star. You're thinking Wardlow to fill it to the story, but Paros Hobbs could win. Ricky Starks could elevate himself. Orange Cassidy would get back into a mix, which is something, you know, okay, he's gone down the card. This is a good chance to put him up in, up into something that's uh, that could be very good. And don't forget Danhausen. <laughs> I was gonna say you had that feud with the uh, Adam Cole. That was a fun time. Yeah, Danhausen like, could show up the uh, the thing when he hugged him. That's great. Yeah, so Danhausen could very well be in this match in one way or another. And of course, Christian, as the veteran, could absolutely pull it away and fight Sammy. Veteran, that would be that would be another story. It's a this is. I would say Powers Hobbs is probably the least one that's going to could, could win this one, but I'm just saying there's lots of options. But I'm going to go with Keith Lee, and we'll see what happens there. Yeah, I think I'll go. With, I'll go with the word though. It's like I don't want to. I don't want to say that, but it makes yeah. the most sense. Logically. It makes the most if if story wise, you know something. If, even if you're wrong, hats off for them to put you in that direction. You know something. Got thank you for thank the booking whoever's booking Tony Khan. For, for pushing us in that direction and think there's a possibility. I would rather that than say, okay, yeah, Keith Lee's going to win because he just came over and all that, right? At least by watching by, by watching how well they book this, at least it gives us options. And that's the best thing about wrestling is that if you have options, it means you can enjoy it more. Yeah, it's like, now, I don't think Christian's going to win because he just had the title and lost it. But, like, I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think he could also win, too. It's like, I think anybody in this match could win. So, it's like, a, that's, why I'm, yeah. that's why I'm saying this is, like, my, the main event for me. Because, like, I have no idea who's going to win. It's going to be an awesome match. Yep. Now, speaking of options, that was a little segue. Uh, AEW Tag Team Championship match. Not just one team. Not just two teams. Three teams are going for the belt. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, the champions. Jungle Express. Versus Red Dragon, yay for them, and versus the Young Bucks. This is something that you don't exactly, like we talked about before, we don't know who could win this match. Is it time for Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus to lose? They just won the belts back in November. Hmm. And, See, I think, but, I think if yeah. you look at the whole, like, uh, the elite, right? Because you've got Adam Cole and Red Dragon... And effing young bucks. It's like I, I, it's look like it's it's like it's looking like if things go down in a certain way, it might be their time, you know. But, uh, yeah. but then, even though it kind of is always their time, because they're always like you know healing it up and like interfering in everybody else's stuff. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Which makes me want to hate them so much more. But like, uh, so it's <laughs> like you know, I mean, and they've got like you know they got two thirds of the teams in this match, so it's like, hmm. Well, statistically speaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the the thing is, will the feud between Red Dragon and the Bucks cause them to lose to Jungle Boy Luchasaurus, oh, or 
or DC. See, that's a, that's a, that's the cool part, right? Is like you know, it's like if it's not the elite's time to like rise, you could see them imploding as well. Where it's like you know, mm-hmm. where like it all it all just comes crashing down. It's like you know, they had two thirds of the teams in here, and then they lose, and then Adam Cole has a match, and it's like maybe he loses too, and it's like oh, it's not our time. It's like what happened? And they all start blaming each other. It all just <laughs> turns exactly. into a whole meltdown. It's just like yep. it's your fault now. <laughs> Because you got to remember, there's not another pay per view for well, there's one in May, so March, April, May. Then, we, therefore, we got a couple months. We got eight weeks to get to the next one, so you got to have eight weeks worth of storyline. So, elite imploding that would take you all the way to the next pay per view, or you know, it, there's lots of opportunities, right? So, I well, who do you pick? I want to know who you get. To I pick want first. Jungle Express to win just because I like them, but uh. It, it, it doesn't just like feel weird about the Young Bucks because it feels like they're always there, but they're never doing anything except for like interfering with everybody else's stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like I don't want them to win. Um, and and Red Dragon. I mean, Red Dragon. I'd like to see win just because you know they came in from WWE after like having not been treated well like everybody else. So it's like it's always nice to see <laughs> see the ex WWE talent win. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I I like I like Red Dragon. I really I've liked them since I watched them in New Japan. Uh, they are a great tag team. If you put the belts on them, you're going to have great matches, tag matches, every week with these guys. They're so fluid. They're so good. But I think the whole Buck thing, and I think that's probably what they're setting up for at the May pay-per-view is those guys going at it with the Young Bucks. And so I'm going to be agreeing with you. I think Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus are going to win. But we're going to have the Red Dragon Young Bucks match to to and maybe yeah I think I think yeah. actually it's a better call it's like I'd rather see the elite implode than have it be their time because it's like I think it's gonna be more fun and you just get more story out of it if you like throw the curveball here and like don't yeah. let them all win and yeah. like you instead they're all fighting each other for the next, for the next while and and how about this for a, a match at the next pay per view at uh, I think it's double or nothing it's a red dragon. And Adam Cole versus the Young Bucks. Kenny Omega. And Kenny Omega. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, sell, that sells pay-per-view buys right there. That's pay-per-view buys right there. So, yes, I'm going to go Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus versus Red Dragon versus Young Bucks. We go with Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus for the win. We are both in agreement on that. Now, here's one that... And I would, I would just like to see... And, and, like, and personally, I would love to see a, a Jurassic Express Lucha Brother rematch because... Oh, Lucha Brothers! I love. I effing, I effing love them. They make. They're like another one of the teams that make AW worth watching because they just do the oh. most insane stuff. And it's just so effing awesome every time. It's just like, ah, I can't believe they just did that. It's just so yeah. So I, almost, I, I can't believe that man almost lost his arm. Had it ripped out of his socket. Oh, absolutely. Ouch! That had to hurt. That had to hurt. Phoenix. And then like now we have the effing like House of Black and like effing uh. Yep. Like that yep. faction and that team. Yep. I love Malachi Black. He's he's my favorite heel right now. It's just yeah. It's like ah, so good. All right, next up is one that I think is going to cause a little disdain between us. I'm gonna, i got to find it here. It's going to be Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston. Chris Jericho, the man of a thousand abs, all of a sudden. <laughs> I can't believe he said that. Oh. I, that, man, that man has got himself shaped up for this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if his contract's up, and so therefore he wants to look good for if WWE comes calling. I have no idea, but he is looking in great shape against Eddie Kingston, the man who can take a mic and and sell you gold, baby, because that's what he does. I'm I'm very interested to see what you would think, Chris. What do you What do you think's going on? Who thinks going on? Man, I feel like this could go either way, honestly. But I would, like, okay, okay. Here's the thing about like Chris Jericho with me is like, okay, I respect this man. But, like, as a heel, I absolutely hate him. Like, in WCW, like, it, like he would just beat up on the cruiserweights. So it's, like, for, for, like, the longest time, I just, like, I absolutely... And, like, he would always be a heel and just, like, come out and, like, make fun of everybody. And just, like, you know, whatever. And then, and then, and then he would do WW, WWF, and he got, like, super popular. And that just pissed me off so much. And I was just like, oh, why do people like him? And then just, like, you know, <laughs> whatever. So it's, like, yeah. I mean, he was over, but, like, and, like people liked him. But, like, I mean... I, I mean, I, I, I like, I, but like, you know, as a heel, he was like, you know, like doing his thing. And I just, I just like, I, just, I wanted to effing knife him. Knife him. So it's like the fact whoa, that he, whoa, he, whoa, he just whoa. like, you know, whoa. Was don't <laughs> knife, please don't knife wrestling. I'm not going to, I'm just saying it's like, that's, that's how I felt about Chris Jericho in the nineties. And then like the fact that he was like, people like, you know, always liked him. 
and then like he, he he was over and just like you know he he i feel like he never got like his due for being a hill and people were just like that was like when hills were like ruled hills ruled and therefore he was a hill therefore like you know he never felt that he never he never got the consequences of his actions as a hill it's just like he got to be super popular hill anywho and like now he's in the aw and i'm watching aw and like i think chris jericho man just <sighs> still still around and um <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I feel about Chris Jericho. And I mean, that being said, I've gone from like hating him to like kind of liking him. I do like the Chris Jericho sing along every time he comes to the ring. I, I quite enjoy that. Everybody singing the theme. And um, mm-hmm. I, I do quite a bit, but like, yeah, dude, I, I, I love Eddie Kingston because it's like he's so funny every time he cuts a promo or every time he's on the mic. It's just like entertaining. So I want to see Eddie Kingston win just because I dislike Jer- Jericho, but I don't think Kingston's going to win just because there was the uh, whole like. Uh, there's like a mini. <clears throat> what's their faction? Uh, Jericho. Uh, inner circle. Inner circle. There's like a mini inner circle reunion after the uh, the two well, dudes they, lost in yeah. the tag team battle royale, and he's like, and he's like, oh, you guys got my back, and they're like, yeah, we got your back. So it's like, I I could see at some point if they have some sort of like run in slash interference or whatever to like have shenanigans here and then uh, score yeah, one for Chris Jericho. Because back in on Impact. Uh, LAX were those guys, and Eddie was their manager, right? So uh, it, it's it'd be very interesting to see if they go in that direction or not. That's and be honest, I would like to see pr- proud and powerful. Uh, I would like to see them get more involved in the tank. It's, it's almost been three years since they were in here, and to see them not up there as one of the biggest hottest acts is a bit of a surprise, right? So I, this could be a chance for them to break away. This could be a chance for the inner circle to dissolve. This could be something to do, like, look at Sammy. Sammy's, yeah, I could, I could see that happening, too, the inner circle dissolving, since they did just have the whole, you know, hug it out thing, or more yeah. like fight it out, but yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's going to happen that way, but Chris Jericho is not going to lose that much and, and get 15,000 abs to lose a match. I don't think so. So I think... I think the I um, I I really would like Eddie Kingston to win. Uh, I loved his match with uh, with uh, John Moxley many many months ago, and of course we had uh, him and Miro uh, a couple months back at the pay per view. Very good wrestler and interviewer, but I think this one goes to Jericho, and we'll see what happens. And we'll see what happens. Next up is another. Flip your coin, which is Brian Danielson versus John Moxley. Oh, mm. oh there's going to be yeah. slap around. Now, the question is for you. John Moxley just comes back in January for being off, All right? Mm. And this is the first big match. It's not he's he's wrestled, but this is his first big match against somebody. Does he lose against Brian Danielson, or does Brian Danielson win? It's gonna be very. It's a good question because, again, we talked about people winning in singles matches and challenging later on. Could you see Brian Danielson winning and challenging Hangman again, or do you see even a better one for the pay per view coming up in May? John Moxley winning and challenging either Adam Cole, which I think, well, the way I've already talked about, it, I think Hangman's winning. I'm going to go with that direction. So you're, there's a little hint for you who I'm picking. See, see Moxley versus Hangman at the big pay-per-view. I mean, I don't I don't see Brian Danielson losing this just because he had those two matches that were awesome against Hangman. They mm-hmm. were like 60 minutes long. It's like, dude, that was awesome. And, it's and, like, they could, and they could go with that too. They could have like the, 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 th- the third match of them all, right? And just say, okay, this is now, say, a 90-minute match or something like that. Well, I mean, and there's also the whole, like, angle where Danielson wants to make the faction, right? So it's like, Mm -hmm. maybe he does it, and then they finally do. Which I kind of hope they do, just because I I quite enjoy that aspect of AEW versus WWE. They actually have factions that actually, like, it works. So I would like to see that. Because that's, yeah. Or just, like, I just want to see, like, what... With, like the whole like how that would work or like this whole thing is about like violence and <laughs> did, did this person displayed a violence tonight <laughs> so i would like to see yeah I th- i'm i'm gonna say i want to i want i mean i don't know dude i think i think i just like brian Dan- or uh or uh daniel or whatever 
Brian Danielson, Brian Danielson more Danielson. than John Moxley. So it's hard for me to like say like say anything good in this regard about Moxley in this matchup. So it's hard for me to like <laughs> be mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, let me be neutral in this one. So I think it's gonna be a uh, Brian Danielson. Okay, perfect. And I'm gonna go with John Moxley. See, I like this. Now we got two different things. I would absolutely love Daniel Bryan to win, and and, and just because he's just so awesome. But at the same time, I think looking at a pay per view down the way, they could actually put John Moxley into that spot. And him versus Hangman, it's something new, hasn't been done before. And I think that would actually sell a lot of pay per views as well. So I'm going to go with long term thinking John Moxley will win this match. And maybe still have a team with, with Brian Danielson. You never know. Yeah, I now, guess like either way, they could still do the faction thing. It doesn't really matter. It, it's it's just like they were. It was just like they wanted to do a match because, like you know, he's like you yeah. can team with me. But then Matt Mox is like, no, nah, I said we fight first, dude. So yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. And hey, you're a good kid. Yeah, let's go. All right, and then, and then here's another toss up because why not have more toss ups? Dog collar match: CM Punk versus MJF. This is a fantastic feud. This is a fantastic feud. It's like, it's, I, it's, I want CM Punk to win, but it's like, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to happen, man, because it's been such a good feud back and forth. But it's like, I really want MJF to get his comeuppance, because F that guy. F that <laughs> effort. Like, I said I would knife Chris, or back in the day, I wanted to knife Chris Jericho. Now, I mean, I don't now times want to knife Chris Jericho. That was people. back in the day. I hated that guy. Stop and just like he, people. like, I would have his promos, like, effing memorized, like, before he even said it, he's all like, never, ever, and just like, <laughs> ugh, just. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's like, because he's in the same division as, like, he was, like, air quote, cruiserweight, even though he's, like, six foot whatever, like, beating up on all, like, the little people, and then just, like, you know, always beating up on Rey Mysterio and all the other cool cruiserweights that are, like, way cooler than him, whatever. It's, it's a whole thing, I hate him, and it's, like, I res- but I respect him now, because, like, looking back, I can see, like, he was just that good of a heel, and, like, I, I think I hated him. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, like, that and person now to me is, well, not, I wouldn't say that person now to and, me, but, and like. And the thing is, the repetitive of, of Chris Jericho. <laughs> actually made people remember him You're because right. never and the fans get ever and you remember it 20 years <laughs> from what it was that's how much it affected you so that's a trademark of a great heel but again mjf when is this man going to get his comeuppance right. will it be it's, on sunday it, it's like that's that's your thing is like he always has like some sort of like thing where that. he cheats too or it's like you don't know if he's going to get it so it's like because like the match where he like you know him and cm punk when they fought in pittsburgh or uh not Pittsburgh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Oh, that was a great match when they had to like, restart it. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. oh. But then, like, Wardlow came out and gave him the ring. It's like, oh, every, every time. Every time, MJF. Ah. So it's like, you know, it's, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, <Yeah. laughs> so he is my least liked, liked heel right now where I just hate him. But yeah. I don't want to die from something I'm not, like, weird like I was back then. Or not, I'm, I'm not, like, not, not to say I was weird, but, like, you know, I'm not, that's, like, I'm not, that's not who I am now, okay? I'm not going to, like, knife somebody. But like I do think wow. he's just such a, a, a heel that he's like he deserves wow. bad things to happen to him. Yeah. <laughs> Shut wow. up, folks. Yeah. But um, but you know what? This is re- this is the reason why they don't let you into Canada. <laughs> I'm just saying. Are you still wanting knife people? No, sure you are. What's that in your pocket? Never mind. I'll go back. <laughs> a stick. Back. The stick. Yeah, it's just a stick. stick. The stick. So, comeuppance. Now, do you keep him being the bad boy all the way up until he gets a title shot? And then finally he gets his comeuppance when he loses because he's only lost once, I do believe, in all of this MJF. So it's it's. He's I mean, that's what I'm saying. Fun. I'm like, I'm not so sure because it's like I could see this keep going, like to have this keep going because it is like a, it's yeah. like a fun time. Like I enjoy this ride. I I very much enjoy this feud. Like I I was new to AEW, like I didn't know who MJF was, but like after he did that promo on Brian Pillman Jr., I was like, damn, dude, that was effing brutal. Like that yep. was effing yeah. that was yep. effing evil. Like what he said, I was like, wow, yep. that is. I can't believe you yeah. just said that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, exactly. well, that's not going to be in WWE. And, and and then, but like I watched the last preview, he had that match with Darby, MGF at the, at the very start. And that was, for me, and the people who were watching with me, that was like the match of the night because those guys, it was psychology, it had everything in it. And, it, and of course, at the end, MGF used that ring and knocked, knocked him out cold, Darby, and then pinned him, right? It was perfect. Just the way... The heel tried his best, couldn't win, and finally had to pull out the ring and pop him and knock him out, right? Perfect. So this is a big toss-up because what does CM Punk get by being MGF down the road, right? What does MGF get for being CM Punk? 
and I see more of a of a positive if MGF beats CM Punk. Yeah, same thing. Cause it's like, M- like CM Punk doesn't really have anything else going on right now. He's just like feuding with MGF. So it's like, you yeah. know, after this, like, what is there? So it's like I would I would like to just keep the feud going because it is a fun ride right now, and there's no reason but, to stop it. <laughs> well, there you go, right? And, and you never know that could happen, right? But thing is, MJF beat Punk in the first match. CM Punk beats MJF in this one. They could have a third one at the next pay per view to finally settle it all. I mean, that's your he, thing, right? Is like when, put him in a when steel MJF cage. beat him, he didn't beat him clean, and he's like, "Well, he didn't beat me clean, dude." And he's like making him jump through hoops to get the rematch. So it's yeah. like I could, I could see where he beats him again, but it's like through shenanigans, and yeah. like you know they do something similar, or have that. Or have it MGF's group, the Pinnacle, versus CM Punk and his uh, band of misfits, right? <laughs> Sting, Darby, whoever else you want to add in there, right? And just have them in that war game style blood and guts. And they could have that at the pay-per-view just to settle it all, right? So that there's possibilities they could go from, from this angle. And that's what makes this match very interesting to me because I want to see exactly who. I think... Because MJF won the first one. All right. I'm thinking CM Punk wins this one. Mm, and I, I think it says, and I think it sets up for a third one at the May pay-per-view, either as a team or I, I, I think it's going to be a, somewhere in a line. There's going to be a cage. Involved. Yeah, I was about to say, it makes a lot of sense to have a cage match here just because of sh- shenanigans that will probably happen. So I'm, I'm thinking punk. Who do you think? Mm, I, I say MJF. I just, I want okay. Punk to win, but I just don't. Like I, like I just feel like there's going to be some sort of shenanigans happening with MJF and his, like you said, dis- misfits. Oh crap! I, I let jobs Skype just dropped again. Let me get back. Sorry about that. <sighs> he didn't even hear my prediction. I don't think. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I, I my my Skype crapped out again, but I was gonna say um I want M, I want Punk to win, but I think MJF's gonna win. Yeah. I got okay, good. Well, or just I, I like just feel like there's gonna be like some sort of like weird shenanigans with like interference or something. So Oh more than likely. More than likely. You got a man chained to another man. You don't think that people are going to come in and attack him? Do they get a chance? Absolutely. And then, and then, say Punk beats MJF, and they're still attached to the chain. Then all of a sudden, the Pinnacle comes out, starts beating on uh, Punk, and that's yeah. when Sting and Darby and say Sammy come out and start battling. It'd be all good. Anyways, let's talk about the women's championship match: uh, Britt Baker uh, versus Thunder Rosa. These guys have a feud. These guys have been feuding for a long time, and finally Thunder Rosa makes it to the big world championship match. Does she win, Tekken? Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. I want her to win, but it's like, I'm not sure, dude. It's like, because Britt Baker's also like, you know, like one of those heels that like will, will deploy any tactic <laughs> to win the who, match. Who else is there in this division who you think can beat Britt Baker? Um, I mean, Chris Statlander, Jade Cargill, I mean, Ruby Soho, I'd like to see her win the championship just because, I mean, I'm, I mean, honestly, anybody, really, I feel like it's wide open in the women's division for the most part. But any, like, ah, uh, Chris Statlander, possibly, you know something, I'll give you that, as, as, like we talked about earlier on. If she wins, then out on Dynamite, she can say, I want to challenge you, Brett Baker, for the title. I think Brett Baker's going to win. I would love Thunder Rosa to win because I absolutely love Thunder Rosa. But I think Brett Baker's going to win this. And, and, and Chris Statlander will be the one thrusted in that position as being the next. Uh, I think because I'd have to put it down as I think Chris Statlander will be the one that beats Brett Baker. Um, that's weird to say, but. Uh, Statlander's got the size and the moves and the skill. Thunder Rosa's fantastic. I absolutely love her, and and I hope that she gets a chance at the belt. But I think this one is going to be Britt Baker that leads into Chris Statlander. 
What do you think? I want Thunderosa to win because I also like Thunderosa. Um, I don't know though, because it's just because mm-hmm. I because I thought Riho would beat her, and then Riho didn't. Because like when they were having that like whole you know having multiple rematches thing, I was like, oh, is Riho actually gonna get the title? But then she didn't. So Riho, I'm not absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Lots of possibilities, my friend. Now, so you're thinking Britt Baker as well, then? Mm, yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll, just because I feel like there's a lot of challengers that like haven't challenged her, you know? Because like we've got Jade with like so many wins in a row, but I feel like I would like to see uh, Britt Baker like you know be challenged by like more way more people than she has. Or I just feel like I guess I just don't. I guess like you, know, you don't see her defend the title much, so it's like you know. Maybe they won't let Jade, they won't let Jade Cargill go. They're gonna give her. They gave her that title. You keep a hold of that title. You're not going anywhere until you lose that title. And we're not gonna give you anybody to lose that title to for a very long time. I think that that's what's gonna happen there. Yeah, I don't think you'll see Britt Baker versus Jade Cargill for a very long time. But you never know. You never know. But it's like I feel, I feel like you haven't seen or like I don't know. Since I've been watching anyway, I don't feel like I've seen like singles. Uh, singles competition versus uh, Britt Baker versus like a bunch of the other people on the roster. Yeah. So I'd like to see that before she loses the belt. Yeah. Honestly, or like defend or defend against like more people before she loses it. Even though I think I I like well obviously Thunder Rosa deserves it. There's no question. But it's like I I would still like to see Britt Baker like defend it against more opponents than she has. So before she loses it. And in the final match, the main event of the evening. Uh, AEW World Championship match Hangman at a page versus Adam Cole it is the only match I do not give two poops over <laughs> oh man I hope Adam I hope Adam Page wins it's funny I, actually that you say that because I agree here's, like, here's that's like, and, that, like, and that's one reason I love AEW is like I don't even care who has the title it's like it's such an entertaining you know across the board card every night yeah. it's like who cares who wins it's, it's going to be a all fun I know, show all I know is this Adam's winning that's all I'm saying. I mean, I don't know, man. I would. Adam, I would, Adam's I would, gonna win. Which be it <laughs> Adam up. Page or Adam Cole? Cole. <laughs> Adam's <laughs> winning. Right. I, 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 I mean, after that Texas Death Match match, that was awesome. So it's like I, I, I feel like uh, Adam Page because oh, absolutely because um, Adam Cole hasn't really like had a, like ton of like hard fights, and it's just nope. like Adam, but, but uh. Adam, Adam Page though has like had to like go through a hill to like keep his title, so it's like Adam Page is the champion we want to see. Yeah, unless it's like a unless it's like some sort of like stipulation match, it's not happening. Like or yeah. it's like or like a weird, you know, like cage match or something. It's like yeah. if it's a normal like singles one v one. Any of those two matches against Brian Danielson, dude. So it's like they're like yeah. an hour long. So it's like you think you're gonna just like you know go up against this guy in like a one v one situation with like no stipulations or anything. It's not happening. Good. I'm glad with that. I hope it's a. I mean, that being said, I, I, he's got the minions to come in, but then you know there could be this like cool feud with like the Dark Order. Who knows? But like you know whatever. So I'm, unfortunately, it's gonna be one of those matches. Gonna be like five hours long, <laughs> and it starts at eight o'clock. I go to work on Monday, and if there's not gonna be over to with till like midnight, a little after midnight, I'm going. Oh my god, no, no, no. Let's see. On a Saturday night, it's not so bad. Sunday night, like it is, I think they're gonna be very tight with okay you'll be done by 11 o'clock so i think we're gonna have a good match adam page wins i'm happy with that which sets him up for moxley in may a double or nothing wait i thought you said that you you said it was going to be moxley versus adam so you, so you think it's okay i thought you said adam uh no yeah. I, adam cole and oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry I agree, I agree with you i agree on that i, I was getting yeah. them confused again my bad that was just like my brain but like yeah I, adam Adam, Adam, Adam. Just, just wait. Till, so I'll just wait. say Pac-Man because he's he's called, he's called Pac-Man, but yeah, I think Pac-Man's gonna yeah. win. Just, just wait, just wait till all the pages come in in cages <laughs> down there. Yeah, Christian Cage versus uh, Ethan Page versus uh, uh, Brian Cage versus Rage in a Cage. It's like it's all it's all great. Well, perfect. Well, that's our AEW Revolution pay-per-view uh, preview. I think it's going to be a great card, Tekken. Match of the night. Nick, tell me what your match tonight's going to be. I already said it, the ladder match. Ladder match? I think it's going to be the dog color match. I love I love me a good... No, no, I'm going to say Brian Danielson versus John Moxley. I think that's going to be one that's going to surprise a lot of people. Danielson's going to up, up everybody's I mean, game in that mm, one. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. I mean, it could be any of the mana snakes. They're all going to be like, like you said, it's a stacked card. So, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to the uh, Brave Beggar versus Thunder Rosa, though. So. Yes, perfect. All right, good, sir. Would you like to sign us out? Uh, Sure. So, yeah, that's it for this episode. And uh, until you see or hear from us again. We saved the universe, the universe by the power been... of wrestling. <laughs> oh, power that's of, supposed to interrupt me when I'm doing the outro. The power of wrestling saved the universe today. <laughs> so, yeah, until you see or hear from us again, thanks for watching. Uh, crap, wait, that's not what I say. I think, dang it, I, I don't remember what I say every time. I just evacuate I say some, your bowels. Something about. <laughs> shut up. Please make sure you evacuate you know, your thanks, bowels. Thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for uh, listening. And uh, until you see or hear from us again, until next episode, you've. You and the universe have been saved by our, the power of our friendship.